If you've driven a car more than just a few miles, you have certainly come across auto accidents and cars that have stalled out on the side of the road. Not only are these accidents inconvenient and time-consuming for those around the accident, but they can also be extremely dangerous if the accident causes a chain reaction, bigger accident to happen. Fortunately, a company has a solution and wants Tesla and other auto manufacturers to make it a standard. Let's find out all about it. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I had the privilege of chatting with James W. Law, rec tech, accident scene reconstructionist, and vehicle behavior analyst at Recognize, a company that has approached Tesla with an ingeniously simple way to improve situations around the unfortunate reality that accidents do happen. I first asked James about his job and what inspired him to come up with these two interrelated ideas, E-Mode and Recognize, like Recognize, but with a W for rec, very clever. Then at 18 years old, I started a uh, tow truck company doing uh, providing emergency services. And I got hit uh, the third weekend and almost got killed. So uh, I'm actually a four time survivor in 30 years of getting hit on the side of the highway uh, doing my job. Uh, unfortunately, the person who taught me how to survive uh, being on the side of the road, well, he got killed and uh, his death gave me the answer to the solution is that um, because uh, he didn't have one second, there was a breakdown in communication. So I investigated it and went over it a million times, but I didn't go over it once. The primary incident isn't the cause of the secondary incident. It's the lack of effective communication or a failure in communications. So clearly this is a very, very important issue. I mean, this is this is public safety. Obviously it's safety for the people who are working on the side of the road, but also for us normal consumers, it's a big deal because we don't want to hit somebody else. Or, you know, if we have an accident or if we have a flat tire and we're on the side of the road, it's good for us to know how to do this stuff too. So James has two interrelated ideas, E-Mode and Rec recognize. E-mode is, as James says, a light sequence that can either be performed by a human driver or better yet performed automatically by a situation aware autonomous car. So we're going to start with E-mode. So can you describe what that is for uh, the audience, please? <laughs> E-mode is a simple recognizable light sequence that a vehicle can use that indicates to surrounding traffic that there is a special hazard or anomaly and indicates its intentions and simultaneously informs on scene emergency personnel that the vehicle is situation aware. I like that last part. So the situation aware means that that uh, either the human being driving the car or the car itself is somehow understands what's going on and is communicating with other people. So that's that's a very important part. And also when the car, uh, Tesla, when it moves over the line, the person behind them gets a better view of the scene too. So there's like, it's help, it's, it makes it great for everyone. What you're saying is, let's say there's a two lane highway and we're going on the right side of the road. So like the US and Canada. And so maybe the right lane is blocked with cones or something. And what you're saying is that that the car, the Tesla or, or what you should do is move to the far left hand side of the left hand lane so that there's as much clearance between the cones or accident or whatever it is as possible. Yes, the further you are, the uh, safer you are. It's not the first car that's dangerous, it's the second car. So to, to clarify here, E-Mode is communicating in to other cars behind it, more or less. Is that what, what you're saying is going on? Well, actually both. It's letting the cars behind you know what's going on. It's letting them know, one, uh, that there's a, there's a special uh, hazard, you know, and it's also letting them know what you, they should, should do too. It's clarifying okay. it by opening up the view by being on the line, like we said before. And uh, also it indicates not to pass because some people will tend to want to pass during an emergency scene or uh, or any breakdown, any car on the side of the road. But if you pass, uh, you could get a ticket, you know? And uh, what E-Mode is going to do is going to save people from getting tickets. There are five different anomaly or emergency warning modes. One is a right lane or right shoulder anomaly. Two is a left lane or left shoulder anomaly. Three is a center lane anomaly on a three plus lane highway. Four is a both outer lanes anomaly, again on a three plus lane highway, and five is a full stop in all lanes anomaly. For situation one, if your car comes upon a car that is broken down or stopped for any reason on the right hand side of the road or the shoulder, the E-mode response is first to slow down and move as far left as safely possible. Then the car or you as a driver flashes the hazards at least three times, then the left turn signal three times, then the hazard three times, then the left signal three times, and on and on. This not only alerts the drivers around you that something weird is going on, but also indicates via the left turn signal which direction the person should go in terms of switching lanes. 
So this is a really brilliant system for two reasons. First, it does not need any new equipment on your car, just your hazard and turn signal lights. And two, even if the person behind you has never heard of E-Mode, they will almost definitely slow down and move over as well. James has logged numerous runs doing this action by hand, and 90% of cars on the road respond properly the first time they ever see this signal. And that's a huge safety benefit for other drivers and for the people on the road. There's a response rate for unknown people, meaning that people who do not know it, the response rate for the first cycle, hazard, 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 turn, 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 is about 90%, 75 to 90%. By the time the third sequence goes through, it's 99.99%. The other situations are signaled similarly. For situation two, which is a problem in the left lane or left shoulder, the E-mode response is first to slow down and move as far right as safely possible. Then the car or you as a driver flashes the hazards at least three times, then the right signal, right turn signal three times, then the hazards three times, right turn signal three times, etc., etc. For situation three, which is a problem in the central lane in a multi-lane highway, the E-mode response is first to slow down and move as far one way or the other as safely possible. Then the car, or you as a driver, flashes the hazards at least three times, then the right or left turn signal three times, depending on which direction you've gone, then the hazards three times, then the right or left three times, and on and on. Which direction the turn signal and which direction you move in this case is based on which country you're in. If you drive in a right-hand country like the U.S. or Canada, the turn signal is to the right, putting people in the slow lane so they will slow down automatically. If you drive in a left-hand country, the turn signal is to the left, so again you're asking people to move to the slow lane. For situation four, which is a problem in both outer lanes but the center lane is open, which is extremely weird but it could happen, the E-mode response is first to slow down as much as safely possible. Then the car, or you as a driver, flashes the hazards continuously. So that's <laughs> kind of common, it's the way it is today, but that indicates that you're not turning either way, you're just going straight. So what about situation five, where all lanes of traffic are stopped? Well, here James has decided to be clever and use the Morse code for the letter X, which is long, short, short, long. So you or the autonomous car press your brakes long once, then two quick taps, then long once, and then you keep on repeating. So if you think about this, this has a major advantage over hazard lights, which only flash at a constant rate. As humans are really good at ignoring constantly repeating signals, hazards are often ignored. But this long, short, short, long variation will get everyone's attention and cause them to slow down. And also because it's your brakes, people know that you're stopped because you can't do that when you're moving. So around this situation, people will automatically slow down and become much more cautious. Between all five of these cases, every emergency road situation is covered. And people really don't have to even know what these signals mean necessarily to get it and drive better in an emergent situation. These simple signal patterns, plus properly moving away from the stopped car or person and slowing down will save many, many lives. Oh, and by the way, in most countries, it's also the law. People have been killed from cars that just moved over. However, not one person has ever been killed from a car that slowed down and moved over. Good. So, so, so actually what you're saying is part of this is an educational thing that, that yes. there may be a lot of the audience actually who's watching this may not even know that that law exists, even though no, it's been around for decades. Yeah. Uh, the problem's been out there for 100 years, but for, for the past 25 years, a lot of people have been pushing. The second related portion of James's system is recognize, which is the method by which cars in motion and stopped people in cars can communicate with each other in emergent situations. Recognize is an effective communication that eliminates any breakdowns in communication between static vehicles and traffic in motion by exploiting all available communication systems with several redundancies. Recognize is communication that addresses human sensory systems, primary sound, uh, sight primary, sound and vibration, and intelligent vehicles and their multiple sensory systems, vision, sonar, radar, bird's eye view, and vector space representation. So how is this done? Via clear vehicle placement and signaling. For example, tow truck drivers are hit far more often than our police and ambulance drivers due to poor visibility. It's because right. the tow truck are in front, their lights are not being seen, and in the loading process, they're not getting seen. So, uh, hook, you know, um, hooking up on an angle or placing your vehicle on an angle uh, addresses the depth perception problem, and it in, and a, a five to ten percent angle degree uh, can increase your flasher view up to a hundred to two hundred percent by reflection off the vehicle you're towing, you're you're, you're hooking up to also. Angling a vehicle is not only good for emergency vehicles like tow trucks, but can also be used by us consumers as well. 
If you end up stopped at the side of the road, don't leave your car facing exactly parallel with traffic, if possible, of course. Instead, angle the front of the car more towards traffic and the wheels turn significantly sideways. This makes your car look bigger, first of all, as it's angling into traffic, and also makes the car look like it's not moving as the tires are clearly not facing forward and like it's about to pull into traffic. This simple action will cause drivers to avoid your car automatically and will reduce danger in these situations. Specifically, that vehicles should have their tail to the rail, they say, and nose right. to the line, meaning that your rear end is where you don't want people to go because it's red and your white right. lights are going to where people and people naturally, like in the pictures, <laughs> will go towards the white light and we avoid red. It's, it's just a natural phenomenon that goes way back before even horses were around. One thing that's really amazing about James's E-Mode and Recognize system is that they are completely international. It doesn't matter which side of the road you drive on or what language you speak, you can still create these signals and understand them, and that's pretty brilliant. So what about Tesla and other cars? Obviously, autonomous cars should realize when an emergency situation is happening around them. Should they then use E-Mode and or Recognize to communicate with the cars around them? James firmly believes the answer to this is yes. Obviously, as a normal human, I can hit the hazard button, then I can turn it off. I can flick the light three times, turn that off, do the hazard. So you can do that stuff. Yeah. But even better, of course, would be with the smart cars that are coming online if they would just automatically do that. And because the human parroting is so good, people will go like, oh, I better get over. And, and right. hopefully even, even more lucky, like somebody else might behind you go flash, 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 turn, turn, turn. And so they might communicate to the people behind them too. So, yeah. The hazards by law override the flashers so right. you would put on the hazards and by the time you get to the flasher they would pretty much sequence three times leave the flasher all the way on and after that you just have to toggle off and toggle on you know um, oh i see what you're saying so the you could just leave the turn signal on no problem yeah. because the, the flasher will override that so that's very yeah. easy then trucks respond very well to this and i've been so surprised that cars respond well to this and when i rented a tesla with money that we raised uh, I was surprised in the videos. It was like the big moment for me seeing how the cars in back responded so well. Because a big truck doing it, right. you might easily see it. But the Tesla, the response was uh, was amazing to see how fast other vehicles right. recognize the uh, sequence. One other important factor is when the Tesla semi truck comes out, trucks will likely drive in caravan style with one semi with a human driver in front and three or four behind that person that are just being driven autonomously. In this case, communication with other trucks and with other vehicles sharing the road will be critical and E-Mode can help there. Tesla semi, three semis or four, uh, come up to a bus that's flashing its lights because they're letting out children on a two lane highway, two lane, two lane each side. The right. semi comes to a stop because it recognizes the light sequence on the uh, on the uh, bus. Well, after that, it can do the all stop mode. So let other truckers and other vehicles know that you know you cannot you can you can become equal with the vehicle, but you do not pass the vehicle because there's something. Right. So this is beneficial for buses, save our children from getting hit and killed, and also uh, pass the message on to others. And also for um, uh, when there, there's pileups, you know, if there's right. a pileup. It indicates to other people that, you know, uh, come to a stop. Yeah, because oftentimes the first accident in uh, one of those big accidents on a highway or something is not that bad, but it's the people behind who are, you know, maybe doing 120 yeah. kilometers an hour or something just come smashing into all these completely stopped cars and that's just even work. James has approached Tesla about converting their fleet to be able to use E-Mode specifically to communicate with other Teslas and with cars in general. Amazingly, nothing has been done to improve car communication since the 1960s. This presents a great opportunity to save lives for a forward-thinking company like Tesla. Well, hazards have been around since 1967, and we have not added any new light sequences as a new language. If Tesla says yes to recognizing E-Mode, It'll be the first company to add on communication between vehicles since 1967. There's nothing new since then, you know? Oh. Uh, that so seems like a fun, I mean, come on, Elon, just to do something because it's really cool just to add something new that hasn't been added in over 50 years. Well, he did F mode, fart mode. He may as well do yeah. it, right? <laughs> um, it's also protection for Tesla owners who break down. Like everybody knows Ellie Burton, you know, who's a big Tesla fan, SpaceX fan. This summer he was broken down with his car and with his daughter. And Tesla already makes it safer for everybody because they don't have a spare. You don't have to get out. And so many people get killed with that. Tesla right. eliminated that problem. You will not hear a Tesla owner get killed or someone 
helping a Tesla while changing, you know? So tell me, so you've described it like why this is good for you as a rec tech. You've described why this is good for us as consumers. Uh, if I worked for Tesla, so <laughs> I wish, right? But if I was like Andre Carpathy or somebody, what would you tell me? Like, what? Why would why would this be a good thing to implement in Tesla first and be the beginning of this process rather than following somebody else? Right. Well, uh, if you were Elon, I'd make it short because he's busy. You know, nice little short. Uh, I would say no part is the best part. This can be done, you know, with no added parts. Uh, he's also the king of automation, so automating it, you know, would be just a thing. I mean, well, well, and here's another possibility. I mean, one thing that Tesla has a lot of is vehicles on the road and they have the ability to track the data. So they could actually release that as part of one of the beta software things that maybe people could enable, you know, they could opt into that or something. And then they could get the data off the roads and see if that's improved safety and made other people safer around the Tesla. Andre has the unique position right now as head of AI that he can literally solve this 100 year problem for Tesla within one year, leading the example that all other companies can, you know, follow through or, or die, if you will. I shouldn't say that maybe, but right. they can do the same. And through Tesla's open source policy, you know, it's like the middle brake light. They all have them now. So it would get Tesla, I believe, closer to the 999s that they're looking for. And when you right. appease, the regulators by having the, um, the 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 police industry on your side because if you have look at this if you have the police industry on your side if you have fire EMS the, the towing industry all the rec techs tow truck operators if you will um, all of them on their side you also get all their family members that worry about them getting hit and killed okay right. so you gain all of them and this will regulators will be like uh, this is so this makes so much sense that uh, you know. Yeah, we'll get uh, we'll get the um, regulators to speed up their their step and maybe try to get catch up to Elon. Maybe you know what I mean. The goal of this would be to make this an international standard that not only human beings would know and be able to do themselves, but that cars would eventually take over and just do automatically. And, well, yeah. and you're saying like I know Tesla has a lot of open source software, and so obviously they could open source. Once they've more or less solved this problem, they could kind of open source how they did it and other people could then implement it more easily. Finally, James has personal and altruistic reasons for sharing his concepts. He wants to save lives and he thinks that Tesla is the company that both cares about safety and can move fast enough to implement something like this quickly. And also uh, why Tesla is because uh, Elon understands first principles. And although I'm shouting to the world, it's slow down and move over and I'm being argued. Uh, um, we, we're past that argument phase and it's proven and I can prove, uh, you know, to a certain degree of accuracy that uh, uh, that this can be done. So I want to give it to Tesla in the name of all these people who died. And um, well, of course, I wouldn't say no to a free Tesla, but I would actually prefer to work with Tesla or for Tesla to help them achieve their goals. You know, One quick note, it will also yeah. keep Tesla in its current position as the only major car, co car company to have zero struck by incidents involving death of emergency personnel. I'll repeat that. Tesla is the only company to not have any struck by incidents involving the death of a firefighter, tow truck operator, police car, or none, zero. As you can tell from these clips, James is passionate about his mission to save lives. And the combination of recognized to communicate between stopped vehicles and ones on the road and E-mode that communicates between cars that are driving into emergency situations is his elegant solution to a problem that's really existed since cars started driving on roads more than a hundred years ago. So what do you say, Elon and Tesla? Will you take James up on his idea? For all of our safety, I hope the answer is yes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it interesting. If you do, definitely make sure you like it so other people can find it. I think this one in particular is really important. The more people know about this, the better this one is. So please do like it and definitely subscribe if you want to see more of these. Also, a real big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Thank you all so much. Also, a big thank you to Zenly Music for doing the intro and conclusion music. And if you're in the market for a new Tesla, definitely check out our referral link. If you use that one and buy one, we both get a thousand free supercharger miles. And also don't forget to click our Amazon affiliate link, which is also in the description. If you do that and buy something in the next few hours, that really helps out the channel. Thank you. And of course, as always, make sure you ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time. Bye-bye.